to some degree, abortion law and politics are polarized because all of American politics are becoming more polarized. There's a concept called negative partisanship, which basically means how do you view people in the opposite political party? And increasingly in the United States, the answer is really catastrophically badly. And that affects abortion politics too. The Supreme Court is allowing a controversial Texas abortion law to remain in place. It's the most restrictive law of its kind in the country. There are no more abortion clinics functioning in Texas. Zero. This is the moment in the battle over reproductive freedom everyone knew was coming. It was just a matter of time. Officially, it didn't overturn Roe v. Wade, although obviously, for all intents and purposes in the state of Texas right now, Roe v. Wade is gone because the law uh, prohibits abortion when a doctor can detect fetal cardiac activity, which is usually six weeks into a pregnancy, which is usually about two weeks after a missed period. So banning abortions at that point in time covers about 85 to 90 percent of abortions in the state of Texas. It's unusual in the sense that not that it bans abortion at the point that fetal cardiac activity can be detected, because lots of laws do that, but rather in the way that it's enforced. So instead of it being a criminal law where the state government enforces the criminal prohibition, instead private citizens are the only ones who can sue. So anyone, and I mean literally anyone, can sue either someone who performs an abortion after the, the period of six weeks, or someone who aids or abets someone who does that, and receive a minimum of $10,000. It's basically left to bounty hunters, right? I mean, that's really what this is, which is going to be a combination of sort of professional bounty hunters, right? Which is going to be primarily anti-abortion groups. And then it's just going to be ordinary people who want to collect $10,000, right? I mean, that could be family members, neighbors, friends, anyone who wants this money. There are rules in American law about when you can sue a state. Generally, you can't unless you're suing a state official charged with enforcing an unconstitutional law. Texas is arguing essentially there is no state official doing this because state officials are prohibited from suing. The only people who are allowed to sue are private citizens. So far, all the government has done is just filed a complaint. And so Texas will have an opportunity to respond. There'll be a trial to decide the constitutionality of this. Before that happens, there may be back and forth about whether Texas's law should be allowed to go into effect while the federal challenge by the U.S. government proceeds. After the trial, there will be appeals and then eventually to the U.S. Supreme Court. And if all of that sounds like it's going to take a really long time, it's because it does, right? We're talking a matter of years, not months. We saw a pretty big uptick when Brett Kavanaugh joined the court. Kavanaugh, of course, was different in the sense that he wasn't only a conservative, but he was replacing the long-term swing vote on abortion, Anthony Kennedy. And then when Amy Coney Barrett joined the court, we saw another big surge in restrictions because there was some question about whether Chief Justice John Roberts would be willing to overrule Roe entirely. But with Barrett on the court, you don't really need Roberts anymore to get to five votes to overturn Roe because there's a six-justice conservative majority. We already know, at least based on what we're seeing now, that between 20 and 25 states would be expected to criminalize all or most abortions. The precise numbers are hard to figure because they're, they're proverbial swing states, right, where we don't know ahead of time what policy they would set. Some of the bans we're seeing don't really pull well, sometimes even in the states they're being passed. But Republican politicians have increasingly relied on a strategy to, to rally and please the base rather than appealing to the median voter. And so these bills get a lot more momentum that way, even if they may not be popular with the average American voter. For the anti-abortion movement, the end game is not the reversal of Roe. The end game is a Supreme Court decision holding that abortion is unconstitutional, which would mean that abortion would be banned, you know, everywhere, like New York, California, etc. There would be no legal abortion within United States borders at all. And the more the Supreme Court leaves this to the states, the more battlefields it's going to be creating. And so I think that the conflict will only escalate from here.